to debate to the showdown over the controversial, uh, controversial BBC documentary on the 2002 Gujarat riots is continuing. There is no end to the standoff in campuses across the country. Despite the ban of the film, the left student group, ISA, in fact screened the documentary in Bengaluru, which was attended by students and trade unions. But the fire is spreading to universities in Britain as well. The Students' Federation of India, that is the SFI, has planned the screening of the documentary on campuses in the United Kingdom, including Edinburgh, Manchester and Warwick universities. But Indian expats have hit back at the BBC. In London, protests erupted outside the BBC headquarters with demonstrators accusing the channel of peddling propaganda. Journalist Enram, senior advocate Prashant Bhushan, have moved the Supreme Court against the ban on the film. The pleas will be heard on the 6th of February. Law Minister Kiran Rijuju called it a bid to waste the time of the court. It has been over a decade since the Supreme Court, remember, exonerated Prime Minister Narendra Modi over charges that he engineered the violence. The documentary only sheds light on an internal assessment of the UK government at the time and interviews victims of the violence. But it does not highlight the findings of the SI2 or the observation of the highest court of India, that is the Supreme Court. It also does not interview the families of the victims of the Grodra train fire, which sparked the violence. So is the BBC guilty of peddling propaganda? And is this politics in the garb of dissent? substantial turnout at this protest in front of the BBC headquarters. There is clearly a great deal of anger over this BBC documentary. The overwhelming view is that this has come a generation after those incidents. BBC! The documentary was biased, it was unbalanced. The purpose of the BBC is to inform and to educate, not to produce incendiary propaganda. <laughs> Public taxpayers' money fund all BBC's employees and they're working and we want boy, uh, BBC to give the news as it is and stop, stop their bias against India and Modi ji. I am uh, against the BBC. Whatever they saw about uh, Narendra Modi ji is fake and uh, is a fake uh, news and uh, bogus news. Let me bring in all the guests and go straight to Varke Parakal uh, of the SFI. Varke, are you not guilty of falling prey to what is evidently a propaganda? Clearly not. Uh, see, uh, regarding, so what exactly are we discussing here today? Are we discussing the exact content of the documentary? Because if we are discussing the content of the documentary, people keep bringing up, okay, this happened 20 years ago, why are you still discussing it? I mean, what kind of an argument is that? This makes the entire field of history invalid. This is coming from the BJP, which is talking about things that happened 300 years back during Aurangzeb's reign in Delhi. Who is still bringing that up? No, no, are no, talking no. about okay. BBC bringing things up that happened 20 years back. No, no, they are not saying that. <laughs> There is some are we forgetting what the Supreme Court said? Humor to this argument. Yeah, of no, no. course. Are we forgetting what the Supreme Court said? No, what the Supreme Court said is actually mentioned in the documentary and we would have known no. that had the documentary been freely screened in India. No, the Supreme the, no, Court the, had the said Supreme Court that there mentioned. has been failure the of certain officials cannot be inferred as a state-sponsored crime. Allegations of criminal conspiracy at highest level cannot be inferred. The breakdown of law and order can't be inferred as criminal conspiracy. Allegations against Modi solely on basis of ultra-sensational revelation. These are what the Supreme Court is saying. So then, what is seen 
as no, factually see, incorrect, you are seeing that and Supreme you are pushing for screening of that content in India. Of course, regardless of what the Supreme Court is saying, the Supreme Court can disagree with the documentary. The central government, the BJP, all these parties are free to disagree with the documentary. But what we stand firmly in believing is that whatever your disagreement is or whatever the government's disagreement is, regardless of this, we should be allowed to screen. Right. The, do the right to freedom of speech is not the right to f the, the freedom to screen whatever the government wants. Right. It is the freedom to disagree with the official narrative. It is no, the freedom no, no. to but, disagree but, with the Supreme Court But Supreme Court, court well. narrative is, is not, not like some kind are... of narrative. Supreme Court is the highest court of land. And they have, after years of so investigation, the, and, and there were multiple years, multiple SITs, several hours of questioning have... of the Chief Minister of Gujarat then. A UPA government at the center. And, Why do we forget and... the facts of this case? Uh, Adit no, Kothari. What... Adit Kothari. No, Do you whatever, see this as a concerted campaign to, findings, to demonize India with a skewed view of the 2002 riots? We, and does it have to do with India taking oh, over the G20 presidency? Oh, this is absolute uh, Modi, see, Let's begin with this point. Na okay. Narendra Modi Adit is not Kuthari. India. Narendra Modi is just a Prime Minister of India. But he is the Prime Minister of India, let's sir. Let's begin that's with that simple fact. Yes. Yes, Adit Kothari, please respond. No, the, pri the Prime Minister of India is not India. <laughs> Let's, let's no, no, nobody is saying that the Prime Minister of India right. is India. It is, this is not, this but is we not have to respect what the Supreme Indira Court has said. Either Indira. you do not believe even on the Supreme Court judgment, then you there is something really problematic. Okay, said, but, Adit, but if you can hear to, me, we, otherwise I'll bring in Kapil on this. Adit? Maria, I can't hear you. It's just conflicting with the other gentleman's voice. So maybe if one person can talk He has finished his point. Please go ahead. Please go ahead. Adit, make your point. Marit? Kapil, the government has said that public screenings of the film will spark a law and order situation. There is no ban on watching the film privately. Can it stand a legal test as the case comes up in the Supreme Court now? And you've heard the likes of argument that has been made by Warke. Kapil Sankla. Is the question towards me? Yes, yes, sir. Please go ahead. Yes, I'm so sorry. Well, uh, first of all, Mr. Varke uh, should respect the fact that Mr. Modi may not be India, but he is the Prime Minister of India. He represents India on international forum. Also, he has been duly elected and voted by the people of India. So therefore, for him to say that Mr. Modi is not India is very fallacious. I don't know why he's trying to sensationalize and scandalize the issue. And that is the problem with the documentary itself. As you rightly said, it, it tends to sensationalize. It tends to, it would create a law and order situation. It's based on a lot of highly rebuttable facts hmm. or highly rebuttable stories or narratives, so to say. So, and very importantly, let us also understand this, that your right to watch the documentary hasn't been taken away. The, the only thing that has been stated is that since it is scandalous in nature, it is sensational in nature, it may create law and order situation and therefore there would not be any public screening. That is one very important thing. And the second thing, what Mr. Varghese must appreciate is that, abs that you have the right to speech, to speak your mind, but that is not an absolute right. Hmm. You know, I've said this in different forums and I'll say it again that your right stops when my nose begins. And so, therefore, if there is something that you say that can create a law and order situation, and this is what the argument I've been in various other cases as well, that if you're saying something only to scandalize and sensationalize the issue, then you can be stopped. Where you say something that also impinges on my right, then of course you can be stopped. And here there is no stop per se, so I don't even know what the difficulty is. Here is the question that there is a documentary that is not based on absolute truth. Yes. That shows only one facet of what really took place. It's Here a one-sided view of the 2002 riots. Court. There is no elaboration of the Supreme Court's findings. The victims of the Godra train fire have not been interviewed. And if anything, it appears to be politically motivated. Adit Kothari, please come in on this. Is there a larger conspiracy here as is being, you know, inferred by people like you who were holding those protests outside the BBC office?
Well, Maria, thanks for having me to begin with. Uh, there's, that, you know, absolutely not a question on that. I mean, the, you know, the timing of this particular documentary needs to be questioned. Uh, the fact that the Conservative Party, the leader of the Conservative Party, is a proud Hindu, and there is a nefarious uh, agenda behind this particular documentary to paint Hindus as extremists. I understand, you know, the speaker before me may have said that India is not Modi and Modi is not India. I completely concur with that particular motion. But the fact that you're using Narendra Modi to define a complete, uh, your, an entire civilization and then to draw the apparently be some sort of a fascist leader who, who conducted some sort of a alleged, you know, as the BBC document also mentions, alleged uh, political program. Hmm. And, and to draw parallels with that against the Conservative Party leader, who is also a proud Hindi, Hindu, undoubtedly not a, not a, not, not a doubt. Uh, that it was released on BBC Two. Now, BBC Two is not consumable outside the United Kingdom. It is only consumable in the United Kingdom. However, in this day and age of technology, VPNs and what have you, of course, you know, people will get access. But, you know, it's a minuscule population in India which actually gets to view this particular So basically, Adit, you're questioning However, the motive you know, of this broadcaster. Of course, that motive will be questioned. And why bring out a documentary of this nature at this time at all? Something that happened 20 years ago um, at, at a time when India uh, is, you know, preparing itself for G20 presidency. It is also the fifth largest country in terms of its economy. Then, you know, is this just an attempt to hijack the the larger narrative of an India which is confident. Shikha, you know, there is the reaction that has come from ABVP as well. Are you also not guilty of escalating the situation on campuses? Even, even after a ban, are you protesting because the administration is not taking action? Am I audible? Yes, go ahead. Am I audible? Yes, please, Shikha, go ahead. Okay, fine. So, um, the very question that uh, we are escalating the conflict or in campuses it's it's just so baseless we were never in the picture nowhere we had any uh, thing in like after this uh, ban came it was a left led jnu issue uh, that uh, so called jnu issue that try they like shared this poster that they are going to screen the thing. Before me, one of the gentlemen said that, you know, public screening is banned. You can watch it. The entire propaganda that we see in the campuses, let me very clearly point it out. That is to create unrest. That is to make students believe, make them not also, I would say someone said the India, Modi about Modi. Modi is India and India is Modi, something like that. They are not even against, I think they are, and very, they are the, the very nature of anti-state things that is going on in the, in, in this left led, like all the campuses where left dominates, whether it is the, it was like previously in JNU, nowadays it has been very, very much counter and they very much clearly understand that they will come into picture like you were calling me uh, like in an interview. You would call uh, leaders from the left, from SFI, ISA. So you are saying that this is about left seeking relevance. All right, because you know, this is not the last word we have heard on this debate. Perhaps when That's the Supreme Court takes it up, I will have Kapil Sankla again on my show. Thank you so much for your time. Varke, Mr. Sankla, uh, Mr. Kotari and Shikha. Remember what the Supreme Court said. The Supreme Court had clearly and categorically said that allegations against Mr. Modi solely on basis of ultra-sensational revelations. Mr. Modi was questioned by the SIT for hours and the entire SIT or investigation was happening under the, you know, was being monitored by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court also said that the SIT in fact exposed falsity of claims, had proof of hard work of state functionaries. It also says that there was no material to indicate that there was failure on part of intelligence. And in fact, if anything, the allegations of criminal conspiracy at highest level cannot be inferred. Then what is the purpose of this documentary that has been put out by the BBC? On that note, we are slipping into a short break. After that, Shah Rukh Khan and Team Pathan made an appearance. This was for a press conference after their super success the film has already crossed 500 crores in just five days.